Hello, I'm going to make a video showing how to do some basic evaluations of a curve generated uh, with the Topham software from Mettler Toledo and basically show how you can use this modulated technique to separate reversing and non-reversing heat flow uh, and also total heat flow and heat capacity, how to get those curves out of a Topham experiment. So the first thing you do is open the curve, file, open curve, browse to one of your Topham experiments. Uh, here I have a PET tutorial. Uh, I'm going to select that and hit open. And you see there's a lot of data. There's actually a lot of oscillations there. They're all compressed on the screen. But if you wanted to, you could draw a small box and hit the zoom button. And you can see the individual pulses. Uh, that are contained in there. And then I can unzoom and I'm back to seeing all the data. Um, to do Topham on this, you or to deconvolute the Topham curve, you just choose DSC and Topham evaluation. Just accept the defaults in most cases um, for polymers. You, your curve may be a little noisy with the defaults there. Uh, um, the, and you can improve them by increasing the smoothing window, for instance. There's some info in the help file about these settings if you uh, want to check that out. Uh, but normally I just accept the defaults. The one thing I do check is in the settings menu. You can go here to select whether you want to show uh, CP0, that's the heat flow at uh, 0 hertz, or that's the heat capacity at 0 hertz. Um, and then the heat flow total, reversing, and non-reversing are your options. I'll just leave the uh, heat capacity, CP0, on at first. And I'm just going to hit OK with the default parameters. Now, it does take a while to uh, deconvolute all this data. You see all those cycles that are so compressed. Um, so it depends on the processing speed of your computer, the size of your data file, you know, which has to do with the heating rate um, and the temperature range that you covered. But uh, just have to wait for that to uh, deconvolute. Okay, once the deconvolution is done, um, you see now I have a couple curves on my screen. I'm going to hit the Arrange Coordinates button to stack them. I have the original data on top and uh, heat capacity data, joules per gram per degree C on the bottom. Um, so now I'm going to just get rid of the Topham curve because I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to select an axis and choose the Cut button. And then I can bring this heat capacity curve full screen by selecting it and choosing coordinate position. That looks a little noisy. That's just caused the smoothing settings that we had. Um, so we can fix that a little bit later. But let's do something else. Let's show the reversing and non-reversing and total heat flow. If you select that curve and you hit view individual curve selection, uh, the other signals I have available to me are sample temperature, total heat flow, reversing heat flow, and non-reversing heat flow. So I'll go ahead and click total, reversing, and non-reversing, and hit OK. Now I have overlapping axes, so as usual I like to do the uh, arrange coordinates. Uh, I'm going to select one of my heat flow curves. Uh, when I do that, it'll move that heat flow axis to the top. Oh, may, oh, no, I actually have to select the uh, x-axis for the heat flow curve and then select a range coordinates. It puts my heat flow curves on top. Um, you know, so what this shows is an increase in heat capacity at the glass transition. And there's actually a slight decrease in heat capacity when the sample undergoes cold crystallization uh, around 115 uh, for PET. But what I have here on top are the three t curves. I can tell right away that my reversing curve is this one right here because it's the one that has only a TG in it and no crystallization. Uh, but if you want to identify all the curves, you can just select all three of them. 
In fact, depending on your settings, the card names may come up automatically. But if they don't, you can just select all three of them and hit Info Curve. Uh, and we'll just double click on these and change the colors. Make one of them blue and one of them black. And it's easy to identify which is which. Uh, the red one is my reversing heat flow. The blue one is non-reversing and the black curve is the total heat flow. And you can see the reversing curve has just the TG in it. Uh, the uh, non-reversing curve ha and the total have some uh, relaxation events uh, near the glass transition and uh, the non-reversing also shows up completely uh, the cold crystallization peak. So that's it. And then you can work with these curves like you would any other curve in the STAR software. Uh, you can calculate TGs, uh, you can uh, do peak integrations, etc. So that's how you get uh, separate the different heat flow components using TOPM.